My name is Natasha Bowden. Uh, I'm an artist that lives and works here in Houston. Uh, I'm also an assistant professor in painting and drawing at Rice University. And a little bit about my background, I'm not originally from Texas, I'm from Maine. Um, I grew up there, uh, went to school on the East Coast, um, did my undergraduate at Brandeis University outside Boston, and my MF, got my MFA at Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia. Um, and then I sort of hopped around like most artists do for a while and came to Houston in 2008 to be a part of the core program, which is a um, residency program attached to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. And then since then, Houston's been a very nurturing place for me as an artist, so I've stuck around um, since 2008, uh, picked up a teaching job, and have been living and working here ever since. What I'm primarily looking for is artistic vision, um, some kind of something that's unique about an artwork, not that it's just well skilled, you know, well crafted, um, or there's an interesting concept, but that sort of overall there's um, kind of a complete or the beginnings of a complete unique vision. And so a lot of the work that I chose to pull out of the submissions for this show um, were things that some of which are very well made, some of which are sort of more quirky in nature, but that all, I think, in some way um, begin to express some kind of unique artistic voice. Because for me, that seems like maybe the most valuable thing when you're trying to figure out how to become an artist and make it out in the art world, whatever that might be for you, is that you really do have to have that unique unique voice to carry you through. So that was kind of how I approached um, making my selections, looking for things that stood out in some way, you know, whether it was um, the imagery that the student chose to come up with or the approach to the imagery, things that I think um, go beyond the requirements that are put on you as a student. So kind of going above and beyond that and coming up with something that really does start to feel like an individual artwork. That's sort of what I tried to glean out of of the pool of works that I look through for the show. What's really nice for me is to actually get to see um, student work that like I'm not familiar with. I mean, sometimes you know you can tell where the things were all made within that particular department because there's a lot of you know different variables. Even certain professors teach certain things and give certain assignments, and so you start to see patterns and you get familiar with the work that you're always looking at as a, a professor. And so it's nice for me to kind of step outside that and visit a place that I really, you know, is brand new to me in a lot of ways. Um, and I can kind of see how work, you know, there's, there's different things going on here. There's different investigations, there's different kind of um, material experimentations. And so that's exciting for me because it also kind of, in a way, shakes things up so when I go back to my students, I can kind of have maybe some new ideas of different approaches, different things to tackle for assignments that I've seen, you know, within the context of this show. So it's nice, it keeps things fresh. Um, I like looking at student work, it actually, you know, it makes me think about my own work and, you know, it's all related to the end of the day I go home and I'm, you know, first and foremost an artist myself. and so seeing what other people come up with and what other creative problem solving um, is out there. I mean, that's all good. That all affects what I do too. Especially as a young artist, you're always trying to grapple with art history and how you fit into a larger context of art making um, and art practice. And what I liked about that work is that she kind of tackled um, that notion by just sort of cramming a bunch of art historical works into her own image. And what's exciting to me is that it shows that that artist is looking outside of herself and sort of trying to figure out what she likes, what she doesn't like, um, you know, what just has existed over the course of time throughout our, his our history and trying to tackle that I think is an important lesson for um, a young artist, even an old artist still has to do that. What I love about that image is kind of the zaniness of it, the unexpected color, the strange kind of rhythm of the um, and shape of all the horses um, in different uh, stances as they're getting ready. It's not super traditional, but it really shows this kind of unique view, um, particular to that artist. 
I'm a cut paper person myself and so um, when I go home at the end of the day that's what I'm doing in my own studio so I have kind of a you know proclivity towards that but um, but what I love about that work in addition to it being a material that I just happen to love is I think there's sort of suspense in that image. I mean, it makes me think of Alfred Hitchcock and the birds, and there's a nice kind of level of abstraction in that image. I just think that well, you can tell a lot without having to kind of add more and more mark or more and more material, but just the simplicity of a cut edge can really add some drama into a work. It would be a very different piece if it was all in one material, but the fact that the artist chose to use one material for the car interior and then another material for the landscape. That um, kind of tension between those ma two materials I think makes that piece successful and also adds this very, there's like a really intense sense of drama, like something is about to happen or it just happened. You'd think that a car interior could be a mundane subject matter, but I think that the change in material, the kind of cut edge that you see around the interior of the car where the landscape is, um, and, and the fact that there's no one present in the car or the landscape, it also has this really, um, uh, there's kind of an anticipation to the image that drew me into it and kept me looking. It's sort of a very simple trope to take something familiar and blow it up in scale. Um, and it, you know, it certainly makes me think of, and perhaps this artist was thinking of art historical sources like Klaus Oldenburg or other sculptors that kind of play with that sense of scale, but it's, you know, despite it being a very simple gesture, I think it's really successful in that it makes us kind of look at these things that we think we know and represents them in a completely new light. And so I, I really like that work and I like that, you know, taking an earring that's sort of a delicate, um, luxurious material usually and making it into this kind of heavy lump of clay, like there's something kind of nice about um, how that object changes through the materials that it's made in. You need people to sort of see what you do and respond to it to push yourself forward. So if you just exclusively make work in the studio and, and never try to show it, um, that can be okay for you, but, um, but I think in order to kind of keep pushing yourself and getting better as an artist, you want to get it out there to kind of get people's feedback. And so I would just encourage students to apply for things just non-stop and don't be worried about rejection. Right now you're in school and you have kind of an instant community around you um, because you're taking classes with other um, aspiring artists. It's important when you leave the academic institution to try to find that community again, whatever that means to you, whether it just means starting a crit group with three other people or one other person, um, meeting for coffee once a week in someone's studio or where you're working, just something that kind of keeps you connected to people outside of just yourself because a lot of opportunities come that way. Um, just by talking to people, just by you know sharing your work, you never know where an opportunity is going to spring from. And so just by keeping conversations going with people, with friends, with fellow artists, um, you know, that's the best thing that you can do, I think. And it keeps you, it also makes it not so lonely being an artist out there in the world.